All right, guys, welcome back. This is part three. It's the final part of our slope deflection method example problem, um, picking up exactly where we left off in the last video, where we had just calculated the and shears and moments for the two spans of our beam. Um, what we want to do now is we want to set up the shear force and bending moment diagrams. So we already know the internal shears at the ends, the e ends of each of these spans. And so looking at this, we have positive shear because this is going up to the left of a virtual cut, and this is uh, the positive sense. Uh, so we have positive 51.562 kilonewton shear right at the end there. So let's write that in there first. So this is 51.562 kilonewtons. Um, we know that the shear just to the left of the support here is a, is negative 48.38, right? So we determined we drew it this way going down. We drew it in the positive sense, but we got a negative number. So it's actually going up, so it is actually negative 48.438 kilonewtons of shear just to the left of the support there at B. So we can draw that somewhere down there. That's going to be negative 48.438 kilonewtons. All right, um, we, we figured out what the shear was just to the right of point B, so basically on the left end of this span, and that was uh, VB2, and that was positive 26.563 uh, kilonewtons. So that's going to be somewhere up in this region. We got 26.563, and then we also figured out what the shear was at the very end here. We figured it was negative 23, right? Because we drew it in the positive sense, we got a negative value. Um, so it's going to be like here somewhere. Um, this is negative. 23.437. All right, so we can use some of our knowledge about that we know about drawing shear force diagrams, like the shear, when we have a distributed load like this pressing down, that the shear is going to drop linearly over that region uh, uh, by the total magnitude of the total force. Um, so this is 10 kilonewtons per meter, the span was 10 meters. So this is going to drop by 100 units as we go across, and actually 51.562 minus 100 is negative 48.438. So the shear force just reduces linearly like that. It jumps up here at the point load that was uh, basically caused by the roller support at point B. And then in this region, um, the shear is going to be constant until it hits this point load. So it's going to extend out horizontal. Let's see if we can line that up approximately till there. And in this region, it's going to be constant until it hits that point load. So we would extend it back like that, and then we connect them. And you'll actually notice that if you took 26.563 minus 50, uh, you're going to get minus 23.437. So when we have an applied point load on a span, just like the statically determinant problems we were doing earlier in the course, it basically causes the internal shear to drop, or the shear force diagram to drop by the magnitude of that applied load as we go across. Which is kind of interesting too, because here at the point, uh, here at point B, we had a roller support, which is basically just a point load pressing up, and so we're coming this way, and it jumps by the magnitude of that point load. So we're gonna get to that in a little bit, but that is going to be the the difference here is going to be the um, the magnitude of the reaction at B. All right, so what we want to do now is we're going to want to know this distance in here. Um, it'll be helpful for us when we do the bending moment diagram. So we can just find that by similar triangles. Um, so we just get. Um, basically, we have a hundred. The, the magnitude of change here was a hundred over the distance was ten, is equal to the magnitude. So that's the magnitude of this large triangle. And then if we nest the smaller triangle, smaller triangle in it, we can do similar triangles. So we get fifty-one point five six two over x being the base here. And so that means we're going to just get to move the decimal place over one. So this is going to be, um, you know, I'm just going to draw this in a different color just so it's clear to us. This is just 5.1562 meters, and then that makes this guy 4.8438 meters. All right, and then this span here, this was five, and this was five from earlier in the problem. All right, so let's move down to the bending moment diagram down here. Um, what we can do is we can draw on the moments that we know. So actually, we went a little too far. Um, here we know that the magnitude of the moment here, um, basically on the left-hand side of the span, so which is just to the right of point A, is going to be 88.54 kilonewton meters, and this is uh, counterclockwise to the left of a virtual cut, which makes that negative for the actual internal bending moment. So we get down here. Let's label it just there. Um, this is going to be negative 
88.54 kilonewton meters. Um, the very right hand side at point C, we have a magnitude of 57. And again, this is opposite that positive sign convention. So this is going to be negative, uh, it's going to be like about there. This will be negative 57.29. No, 29. There we go. And uh, in the middle here, no matter which way you look at this, the moment here, the magnitude is 72.92 either way. Um, and it's negative according to this side because it's uh, clockwise on the right hand side of a virtual cut. And here it's counterclockwise on the left hand side of a virtual cut. So either way we say it, look at that. Um, we're getting a negative bending moment of 70, negative 72.92. So that would be, see if we can line this up, it would be somewhere in like there or whatever. Uh, so negative 79, no, sorry, 72.92. All right, so those are just three points that we need. The, we do need the entire bending moment diagram. Um, so what we want to do is we want to find the areas here of the shear force diagram. And we're going to use these as the changes in magnitude between the points. So where we have the positive area, it's going to be a positive change in magnitude, uh, basically from the start of that area to the end. Where we have negative areas, it's going to be a negative change in magnitude. Again, as we're going from left to right. And then where we have these linear parts of the graph, uh, we're getting a parabolic curve. And where we have constant parts of this graph, we're getting linear change. Okay, so negative 88.4 plus 132.952. That's going to bring us up at this point right here. Um, let's change colors. That's going to bring us up to 44.392. And we have a parabolic shape. So it's going to be like something like that, right? Change in magnitude from here to here is the area 132.312. We get that parabolic curve. Now with the change in area, or the change in magnitude from here to here is this area and it's negative, so it's gonna be pressing us down. That actually brings us right down to 72.92 and it's a parabolic shape. And that's awesome because that's exactly what we were expecting. Now in the next region here, this is area is positive, so we're gonna get a linear change. So negative 72.92 plus 132.815, uh, that's gonna bring us up to, Ooh, let's use a straight line, that's kind of ugly. Uh, that's gonna bring us up to 59.895, so like somewhere around there. So 59.895, all right. And then this last area, uh, again, linear change. Uh, so if we have 59.895 minus 117.185, yep, that brings us down to negative 57. 2, 9. That's pretty cool. So that just confirms that these points, yeah, totally make sense. Um, this, these are the points that we were supposed to be getting, and this is the actual shape of the bending moment diagram. All right, and one last note here. If we were looking for some of the, the vertical reactions at like AY, um, BY, and CY, um, well, AY was a fixed rigid connection like this. So if we're having a positive shear is going to be going down like that, which means that the reaction is going to be equal and opposite to it. Uh, so the the reaction, the vertical reaction at A would have been, uh, let's see, it would be positive 51.562 kilonewtons. Uh, that was pressing in the upwards direction. At BY, it's the jump here, and we're jumping up, so this force is oriented upwards. It's the, basically the opposite situation of here, where we're having a point left pressing down and the graph is jumping down. So if you add 48.438 plus 26.563, uh, you get this to be 75 kilonewtons pressing up. And then at CY, um, if we have a virtual cut here, uh, we had negative shear. So it, the shear was basically going down like that, which means the reaction has to be pressing up. So we get 23.437 uh, kilonewtons pressing up at C. Sweet. Um, the moment at A, we can talk about that too. Uh, moment at A, we have a negative internal moment. So basically the negative internal moment is oriented like that. And uh, that means that the reaction equal and opposite is going to be like that. So we get this 88.54 kilonewton meters. Um, which way is that going? That's counterclockwise. And then the reaction at M, uh, the moment at C, it was this guy, and we also had negative, so opposite that, it's going down like that. 
reaction moments like that, so we're getting a magnitude of uh, 57.29 kilonewton meters, and boom, it's going like that. All right, guys, that is all of the solutions to the original question way, way up here that we started like two videos ago asking for the slopes, no, asking for the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, and the reactions um, of this problem. So it's a lot of work, guys. And uh, if you watched all of it, awesome. I hope it helps.